brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Hey, welcome to Sips, Suds, and Smokes. Uh, today's episode is a sud segment. I'm one of your hosts here at the table, good old boy Mike. Our sud segments is where good beer meets bad radio. Very bad. Or, very, very. Is that with two D's? Bad. Is that it? You're a very bad radio. <laughs> <laughs> naughty, naughty. And not bad in a playful way. Yeah, just, I know. Just, uh, just bad. <laughs> joining here at the table uh, for this episode today are good old boy Dave. Am I the meanest? Sure no. Am sure I no. the prettiest? Sure no. Am I the baddest mofo low down around this town? <laughs> sure no. <laughs> sure no. That's from, <laughs> uh, that's from volume one, isn't it? A volume one CD? Uh, uh, greetings with Dave. That's from Greatest Hits. <laughs> greatest Hits. I knew I, I always get those wrong. Also joining us here is good old boy Caperton. Hello, everyone. And Reverend Mark. It's wonderful to be here. It's certainly a thrill. I'm I'm feeling some Monty Python, you know. You're such a lovely audience. We'd like to take you home, take you home with us. <laughs> I know. We'd just, love to take you home. It's going to come in you somehow. You could probably someway. fit our audience into your home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hey, our said segments are all about uh, um, beer, cider, and mead. Uh, today's episode is actually going to be a bottle share. This is where each host has brought in a bottle or two uh, to share with us as a group. We're all going to try it. Uh, we, most of us have never had any of these beers and gives us a chance to try a bunch of uh, new stuff to share with each other. And we'll give our tasting notes along the way, plus our suds ratings, which we'll talk about here as well. Um, so today's episode is brought to you by the law offices of Scratchers J. Scratcherton. Are you a kitty? Do you need an attorney? Call the law offices of Scratchers J. Scratcherton. Scratchers J. Scratcherton, attorney at law. She'll fight for her clients and give injustice the call. Scratchers J. Scratcherton is not licensed to practice law in any state. So yeah. we have some uh, really great beers uh, on today's show. I'm going to need a little bit of help because uh, I wrote down some of these. Uh, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just going to need a lot of help. I'm going to need a lot of help. That's for sure. Um, so uh, I brought a beer from Idle Time uh, Brewing called It's a Cherry Kolsch um, out of Stowe, Vermont. We also have another beer that Caperton brought, a Zebulon beer. What's the name of that? Uh, Tokyo Gosa. Tokyo Gosa. Hi. Hi. Tokyo style. Gosa. Tokyo style. Gosa. Hi. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's oh, racist. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> it's not racist. It's pretty racist. <laughs> uh, we have um, another beer. That, <laughs> we have a couple of beers that uh, a good old boy Dave brought. Banned once again. <sighs> you know, two roads. Straight uh, up. Now in Japan. We're two roads from Connecticut. Is, uh, we brought uh, Bog Wild. Lots of cranberries. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then from mm-hmm. Ballast Points, uh, Homebrew, whatever. It was Homebrew Homework, Mart. homework Series, yeah. uh, That's it. Um, batch number seven. It's a session, a session saison. Session saison, which is like two word, the same word said different twice. Yeah. Just I'm, quickly, sh- just quickly. Sh- 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 not going to say those very well. Reverend Mark brought another beer for us to enjoy today. From we don't Great say Reverend. words yes. on this show. <laughs> Words are overrated. He man. brought another beer for us to talk about from Great Raft. It's a hoppy saison called All My Tomorrow. There you go. Oh, so, and we'll talk about it tomorrow or maybe today. <laughs> Some uh, great beers all the way around. Uh, we really enjoy uh, these shows because, um, uh, you know, a lot of times we're actually just tasting these blind for the most time. Um, sometimes blind the, drunk. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> Yeah. A lot of things. Uh, but uh, it's great. Great chance for us to uh, kind of break out of uh, you know some beers that we actually know and, and go through some beers that have some serious dude time together. Yeah, um, drinking some beer. Please stop holding my hand, would you? Is that your hand? <laughs> You're right. Uh, um, so uh, 
just a really great lineup. Um, let's uh, go over our such ratings that we'll be using for today. Dave's going to go over th- uh, these uh, for us. Hey, how about some such ratings? We'll be discussing and rating these beers with these such ratings, <clears throat> aforementioned such ratings, plus our signature belching sounds. Here are those ratings now. One, that sucks. Give me anything but a bud. So if you hear that, the beer is not good. Two, was that a belch? You know, if you don't even know if it's a belch, it can't be that good either. Three, ah, what a relief. Ooh, that cleared some room. Uh, Four, a body should really not make that sound. But it does. So I wonder about the angel music in the background yeah, on that one. Yeah. Like, is that part of the belch or, or do you have a near it's funny death you say that it's because a that, that experience? That thought crossed my mind this, yeah. this time. Did you cross like, over oh, to what, the other side? Yeah. Uh, and it's a scary. the pinnacle. Like, this is like if you see a beer with a five next to it, that means it probably has liquefied angel in it. Listen to that hang time. Give me another. Sorry, Reverend Mark. I know you doesn't approve of the script. I would never. <laughs> we, we do not endorse liquefying angels nope, on this nope. show. We don't milk them. We don't liquefy them. You know what? We just let them bless us. That's, that's right. That's all we do. We let them do you know, their thing. This is a one hour show that's mildly entertaining for, for zero it's minutes. At seven minutes and ten seconds. Yep. And that that's what I'm feeling like half of our audience. What, what happened what's funny though is that that seven minutes and ten seconds happens at like the two hour mark. Uh-huh. Harold, you got something better to do? <laughs> Listen to that show again, two AM. You, you can need, come better what? You need fifty three minutes of silence after the episode to that's find right. anything funny. Well, we're going to have an opportunity here to uh, let Dave introduce the first beer. Then we'll come back after our break and talk a little bit more about Wait, what? this. Yeah, you're up first, buddy. So up, buddy. it's cranberry time from Two Roads. It's cranberry time. No, cranberry there is no theme song for this beer. <laughs> so Bog Wild from Two Roads Brewing in Connecticut, probably Bristol or some other place in Connecticut. So, made using mixed fermentation. That means there's bugs in it. Uh, Bog Wild is a cranberry sour brewed with ho. That's not me saying it. Ho? Ho or how. But I choose to say ho. Ho. And early black cranberries. That sounds racist. That's some edgy stuff. Add in a Belgian yeast strain and spices. And you have... The perfect beer for the holidays. So, um, so maybe the Thanksgiving holiday. I guess well, they're getting that there. The cranberry, cranberry sauce. The cranberry sauce. But people have cranberry on. I um, like them. I like that stuff all the time. Do you? Yeah. You probably probably I, I, do. Yeah. I need You're a cranberry. A little, I need a cranberry sauce. Sandwich. Well, when I look at you, I th- I think of a little tart. Yeah. You know, I'm so a little tart. You are a little round tart, aren't you? Sometimes I'm a little red. Well, okay, you know, that was gross. So, so I don't really want any beer now. <laughs> Interesting market, you know, uh, for, you know, beer in uh, the Connecticut area. And I tend to think of a lot of the brewery scene, you know, in that uh, part of the world is really being can- uh, concentrated in the southern part of Connecticut um, around Yale and right around, you know, that area. Yaley's. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, uh, what are Yaley's drinking these days, Mike? Uh, they're drinking what, uh, some people that graduated from Yale and couldn't find a real job. They decided to create a brewery and sell beer back to their classmates. That, that's their big plan. So, yeah. I bet Yaley's could probably brew some pretty good beer. Yeah. Um, some of the time, I don't know that this particular beer falls in that, you know, kind of, um, mystique and Sigma. I'm just, uh, because of, you know, it's a college town. Are you and, waxing you know, poetic? No, definitely not yet. <laughs> so I just remember I know not, two not I know yet. two roads. Definitely that, not yet. Um the first time I had any two roads beer was two years ago, I believe, at G A B F at the rare beer tasting. And um they brought a beer called Philsomic, 
which was uh, a sour ale I remember that, that. Um, had been aged with on strawberries in a balsamic vinegar barrel. Yeah, I remember. And that. it was mm. phenomenal. So very different. So everything these guys do, whenever I'm somewhere, because we don't get them where we live. Um, anytime I'm somewhere where I see a two roads beer, I'm going to buy it. Um, mm, just mm. to see what these guys are up He'll to. He'll knock you out of the way. I yeah. will. I pushed a grandma down. Yeah. Um, we can't even I mean, get balsamic vinegar sure, here. Sure, she was 38, but I mean, she was still a grandma. But anyways. Um, they, they make them young these days. They do. They do. Um, but I, I really like the tartness of this beer. Uh, I like the spicy finish. So I thought this was a good, um, you know, good, uh, good beer to bring to you guys. Well, you know, I think uh, that I remember that beer uh, actually at the Rare Beer Festival. Um, so a lot of people don't know that balsamic vinegar actually, as it ages, gets really sweet. In fact, in Italy. Kind of like Mike. No. <laughs> they Sweeter actually, every day. They actually put <laughs> yeah. uh, balsamic Sweeter vinegar on ice cream in Italy. Um, so that's how, oh, yeah, that's how it's yeah. served in the area. Well, so they do a lot of weird stuff in Europe, No, Mike. it's not weird. It's actually very, Sometimes very Sometimes they don't shave all the parts they're supposed to shave. Uh, that, that's true. I don't know a lot of hairless Italians, so. We're, yeah, I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> We we've just been banned for parts of <laughs> Harry right. Italy. Banned yeah. once again. Harry, I Harry Italy. <laughs> yeah, I you used know. to know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk a, a more about Harry Italians. You know, probably when we get close to That's coming a back. Spicy meets the balls. A spicy, spicy. Sounds so Italian when you meets the balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you add just, an adjective, or when you add a vowel to the end of every that's word, just yeah. so Italian. Sounding. So you're saying that's what's, Italian? That's Italian. what's really <laughs> missing from this beer is basically a hairy Italian. Is that, is that what you're Isn't saying? What's missing from every beer? <laughs> well, that's a. Everybody has to have a goal when they're brewing a sure. beer. You know, you know. Yeah, I'm, just, I, what, what kind of beer are you brewing? I'm brewing for hairy Italians. That's yeah. what I'm brewing. And for. a mandolin playing in the background, yes. <laughs> or something <laughs> like <laughs> gondola. <laughs> Well, listen, we're going to talk about anything but Harry Italians right after this break. Rolling clouds and crashing surf Iridescent dunes reflecting By the light of a rising glowing moon Seashore mesmerizing Night breeze hypnotizing We've come across these back roads none too soon Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows. My hand is yours forever, sweet love. Hey, welcome back to Sip, Suds, and Smokes. You had a lot of really great choices of what to do with the rest of this hour, and we want to thank Good you job that for up. coming back and joining us for this Suds episode today. This is a bottle share episode. We're going through a series of beers that all the hosts have brought for us to share with each other, and we're tasting and rating these as we go along. Right now, we're talking mm-hmm. about a beer from Two Roads, which is a cranberry bomb called Bog Wild, right? <laughs> Bog Wild. It is a cranberry bomb. Going In fact, bog that's wild. that's actually what I wrote more than anything. Is this uh, and is this cranberry juice with beer? Is that what I think this was? You know, when I first tried it, or is this beer with cranberry? I don't know, so, but I mean, I don't. I didn't find the cranberry juice to be it's overpowering. Very juicy. It, it's juicy, but I think it plays well. I'm just wondering what the spices are. Me yeah. too. That yeah. was yeah. That's that's the unanswered question for me. I'm thinking a rake and bass, you know, movie is playing through my head, you know, with all those little claymation figures, and you know, <laughs> that's, that's what's playing through my head right about now. Might I mean, be a little cinnamon or nutmeg, you know. I don't yeah. know. Maybe. Maybe mm. I would take this to one of the top three relatives that I actually hate spending the holidays with. That's that's how much I love this beer. Wow. <laughs> so. well, I don't know. I could gelatinize it and put it in a can, and then uh, you know we can slice yeah, it up. Slice. I'll have a slice of beer, please. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Maybe you could cube it. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that'd be good. I liked it, guys. They do that only too, in Colorado, man. I think. Reverend Mark liked it, too. He's just playing into, He's playing up to Mike. Yeah. I just yeah, I liked it. I just thought yeah. the balance of cranberry was off. The beer itself, I thought, was very well, crisp. Is pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, right? You know, I, I, mean, I thought it had a great finish. You know, off this, it was very squeaky clean. I just, I really thought that the balance with cranberry was just a bit overwhelming. You know, nice tartness so, to it. I, I think it's hard. Cranberry is like uh, your mother in law. You know, I mean, it's going to butt its whoop, way in. Whoop, not whoop, I said your mother in law, not my mother in law. My mother in law is perfect. Okay, okay. Mine she too. listens Mine to too. this show. No, no, <laughs> really. Just in case, just in no. case. You never know. Yeah, but I think it it was her the, daughter doesn't either. So the cranberry twang really really melded with the sour for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't know that it was. Too over the top, but I don't it was think present. It was either. I yeah. think those two complemented each other well. I think Mike's picking up as you know he's kind of reading everything Mike's a there jerk. As, a, as just a huge cranberry. Yeah. I but just thought I had too much cranberry. I think that the tartness from were the, you abused the, by cranberries when you were young? Yeah. Or well, did you have a bad cranberry experience. You know, I do have probably an affliction for a lot of berry beers that. Uh, it's just overwhelming. Raspberry beers. Oh my! He doesn't God, like raspberries. You don't like cranberries. Do no. you like blueberries? Yeah. So when Do it like doesn't overwhelm the beer, I, boysenberries, yeah. gooseberries. If all of that just doesn't overwhelm the beer, berry berry. How about a dingleberry beer? Berry, Mike, berry. Would you drink a dingleberry beer? If everybody cut back on half, are of you that. still are you still brewing, Dave? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know a guy named Harry B- Dingleberry. I might dry hop a beer or two with a. <laughs> Well, I, that's just it. I think that a lot of beers that are combined with a lot of, uh, berry choices, I just, mm-hmm. I think uh, if I had to be grossly over characteristic is that I think to me, it's always a balanced thing. And I like to think that it's beer with fruit, not fruit with beer. Some and, people do go overboard. And I maybe. think in this case, I just think it was a bit off. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, okay. But sometimes you get the cute factor in there for yeah, a certain. I agree. Demographic. Plus, it's pink. You know, it's nice. And it's got a lovely color. Yeah, it's festive. Which I'm, I'm yeah. Out. I'm I still out. have those Rake and Bass songs playing through my head as we're talking about this. So, here comes Santa's elves. Yes, I got that whole thing, you know, uh, playing through my head through through this. Well, our Suds ratings here for Two Roads, uh, Bog Wild, is going to be a four. Uh, uh, you guys ever seen a cranberry bog? Yes. No. I, and Just you know, on TV. I admit that I was ignorant. I, I asked why. They're very shallow. Why is it called Bog Wild? Well, and, it's, and I was informed by Dave that it that cranberries are grown in bogs. bogs. No, they're not grown in bogs. They're, they're grown in bogs. They're harvested in bogs. So it's actually it's it's just grown, you know, in a open field. What are they what, flooded or something? They do. They flood the they flood the bog and that basically has all the f- uh, fruit that floats to the top. Well. And it allows them to harvest the fruit in a more whole fruit variety and huh. actually um, so it's it's more of a harvesting technique. It's not actually a grower. It seems a little technique. wasteful. Seems a little wasteful of water to me. Oh, there's just using- get out there in the field, boys, and pick those. That's right. You get you bend down back you in my day. Back in my day, that's how we used to pick our cranberries. You stooped over and you picked those. It's things. environmentally safe water, apparently. Okay. So anyway, okay. Yeah, we used to have to in chop them and spike them and hang them in the house, hang that's them right. in the smokehouse. <laughs> We, it you know, was hard, day. hard work. Then you had to bail them. I mean, you was, had to walk yeah. three miles uphill both ways to get yeah. your cranberries. And then, if you had a centerpiece that had a twig of cranberry hanging out of it, would you be offended? It, hold so, it. Watch it now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a different conversation. Maybe we should move on. Yeah. So next up is the beer that Caperton brought from Zebuline, oh. which is the Tokyo Goza. Tokyo style. Tokyo style. Goza. Goza. Thank you very Hi. much. Yes. Hi. Yes. So uh, this is from Zebulon Brewery in Weaverville, uh, North Carolina, just Woo-hoo! outside uh, Asheville, um, owned by uh, a brewer named Mike Karnowski and his wife, Gabe. Yay, Gabe. And, and uh, they're doing some cool stuff out there. I've been a big fan of Mike's uh, since he was the uh, the barrel and sour guy, I hope I'm getting that right, for Green Man. Yep. 
and uh, did some great stuff there and then left and started his own gig uh, in a firehouse in, in, in a firehouse in in, uh, in Weaverville it's a crap of those subs they make in those other fire and he's been making some great beers I could go on and on and on uh, Mike brews beers uh, sort of batch uh, sort Specific? of in batches, yeah. uh, a, a lot like a home brewer. So as as a home brewer, it appeals to me a lot. His his kind of style of you brewing. like his music too, right? I like his music choices. He's uh, he dedicates a lot of his beers to a, a musician, artist, or author of some sort. Uh, this this is one of the few beers, uh, maybe the only beer. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is the only beer that Mike has brewed twice. So he only recently in, uh, introduced a, uh, a core beer that he will have available year round. But up until now, it has just been these batches of beer. And this is a batch that he brewed uh, early in the first year and dedicated that batch to Yoko Ono. And, oh uh, no! You and didn't. this and this and this batch is dedicated to the wonderful filmmaker Akira Kurosawa. But so, nice. uh, Mike says thus. He says this about uh, about the beer: a completely fictional style. A ghost. A gosa is a salty, tart wheat beer that is usually spiced with coriander. We used local miso masters white miso which they're either in Asheville or possibly Weaverville. So. Could be. Um, to get the salinity and pickled ginger for the spiciness. Super refreshing and a and perfect for a picnic or a hike or just sitting on the porch. Uh, clocks in at a very low 3.7% That's amazing. Alcohol. That is amazing. So, yeah. Um how do you get that much flavor in a three point seven percent? And he and he pulled it off. I think the pickled ginger really yeah. rather rather than just using raw ginger, I think I think it sort of softened that there's uh, no heat from the ginger. Right. Either. But just just the right amount. Um this beer, everybody that I poured the first batch of this beer for just went bananas for it. Um and I was super stoked to see it uh, available again. And to me, it just, um, it's just super bright. Um, I think he did use some hops here. He did Centennial. And, um, yeah, I just think the combination of all of these things together. Oh, he even has the, the malt bill here. Pilsner malt, wheat malt, raw wheat, and then the miso and ginger and Centennial hops. Hmm. Um, four, that's an four, interesting four, thing. They're dropping IB, a Goza. Four IBUs, though, so just a just a little bit of the. Seems like Goza though is the. That's the catch-all beer right now. You know, yeah. I mean, you can throw anything you want into yeah. a Goza, Not and it's cranberry. It's open. Yeah, there's cranberry <laughs> Gozas. There's I cranberry the, Gozas. Yeah, yeah. There's, I'd, uh, I'd bet money there. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Naysayer. <laughs> Just walked into the bullet, man, yeah. you know. I didn't really take any notes on this beer, though. Well, well uh, it, so a couple of uh, quick production notes about this. So uh, we actually did another show all about uh, Zebulon beers. It's a full uh, brewery takeover we did. show. Uh, the name of that episode is A Walk in the Woods with Mike. Not uh, this so, Mike. Yeah, that not Mike. me, Mike. Uh, Mike the Brewer. Great episode. We covered a uh, you know, full flight of Zebulon beers, so... Um, and this was not on that show. So, um, and uh, never before has such evil villainous scum recorded such a masterpiece. One the whole family can enjoy. <laughs> True, this is a family friendly beer show. Um, so uh, the other thing, if you're interested a little bit more about Goza, um, and you'd like to find out a lot more about it, uh, go back and listen to uh, an episode that we did in season two called "Who Goza There." Um, and uh, hmm. it is the funniest uh, four minutes in radio ever <laughs> uh, with uh, Chris Allen and I talking about how to say the word Goza correctly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, literally 20 million people listen to that um, that small clip. It's really funny. So, And uh, it's a great story behind it. So I'm re- always uh, glad to have a, a really great Goza you know, in front of us to talk about on the show. Um you know, there were a couple of things. Actually, I did not know this was Goza when I was tasting it. And 
Um, the interesting thing is I really thought that the citrus quality off this was um, probably one of the more signature elements uh, off this particular Goza. Um, and I like what it's not. It's not um, overdone. And I think the miso uh, is the thing that's kind of the star of this particular version. Mm -hmm. um, it's provide it's kind of softened some of the uh, tart elements around this. And if you've never had miso soup, it's um, it it has you know a, a kind of a tart, a soft tart quality you know about it. And I like. Uh, I really love, you know, kind of what uh, Mike's done here with, you know, this particular version of Goza. I, this is not like, hey, a Me Too Goza. I'm just going to make this just kind of like everybody else, which is just not their style, period. I mean, right. they just don't do that kind of thing. Right. I think the pickled ginger is... Ginger can be very overpowering, but, for, for me anyway. But I mean, it plays so well in yeah. this one. I mean, it's it's just the right amount. It is, yeah. Yeah, I was I was kind of bracing myself knowing what was in there, especially with the miso. Yeah, um, and I saw it immediately though, also as or tasted it rather as a very wonderful pairing beer with, uh, I like the miso or you know a, a certainly a ramen, a really good ramen, mm. uh, sushi. I mean, you can, yeah, for sure, or a Kurosawa movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's or true. all of the above. <laughs> Well, and I think it would even stand up, you know, in a full-blown, you know, sushi dish. And especially, you know, really hanging tough with uh, horseradish. Um, yeah. I really think that, you know, if you're wondering about an interesting pairing, you know, for a great sushi, uh, great sushi, great sushi, great sushi uh, dish, I think this goza would, would really hang pretty tough, you know, yeah. no matter what you threw at it. So, um, really great beer. Uh, any other comments about uh, this is how Zebulon goes here? I was just glad to see him brew it again. I'm glad you brought it. Yeah, yeah, really great beer. Uh, thanks for bringing that, Caperton. Um, our suds rating here for the Zebulon Tokyo Goza, or is it Tokyo Style Goza? Tokyo Style Goza. Tokyo Style Goza is a four. Uh, so uh, racist. Oh boy. <laughs> Banned once again. Once again. You know, Banned in I, Japan. Doing yeah. a horrible, you know, Japanese accent is not a reason for me to be banned. Because it's all Japanese. Because that's how reasons. Japanese people sound, right? right. Yes. Hmm. No, just in the uh, movies. Kazira! Okay. Yeah, okay. right. Okay. Yeah, just like Dave. <laughs> now that's a reason to be banned. So, up next is Revan Mark once again. <laughs> up next <laughs> is Revan Mark talking about a beer. Um, from Great Raft. Great Raft. Raft. It's uh, the hot. That is season. a Great Raft. Absolutely. Well, Great Raft um, was listed in one recent beer publication uh, as they went down the 50 states of the United States. On a river? They would take one state and, and list the most underrated brewery. Oh. And this one got the most underrated for the state of Louisiana about com that? coming from Shreveport. That's that. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's all relative to you know to context, but yeah, yeah. there's some good breweries in Louisiana. Negative, though. yes, there are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. So anyway, yeah, we're throwing a them a softball here, but they haven't been around that Whatever, long. Girlfriend, nope. Um, they were established in the fall of 2013, and they have three ongoing beers that are distributed. Uh, very locally, just, uh, you know, like in the northern Louisiana, New Orleans area. Uh, and then their best known beer, though, of their three that are on, is on tap all the time is at, at arm's length India Pale Lager. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fancy. The IPL. An IPL in An New Apple. Orleans. Hmm. Yeah, but this one that we tried today uh, is All My Tomorrow. It is a uh, hoppy saison. It pours very hazy, kind of straw colored, with a white head that stands uh, pretty tall for a, a good long while. Nice head retention. Uh, very effervescent, has a nice dry finish. Uh, and the motto on this particular one of All My Tomorrow is that we kicked tradition to the curb. Kick it. Mm. Kick it. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, my response is, yeah, but not so fast. No, not, yeah. I mean, seriously, this is a uh, 6% Saison. Uh, traditionally, Saisons are a low, little lower gravity. 6% is kind of mid-gravity, so it's not that far from traditional. Mm -hmm. Also, of course, they take great pride in the fact that this is a rye mosaic. Um, 
they do have a little bit of uh, Vienna and uh, Munich malt in there to to round out the malt. Uh, but nonetheless, it, it it does have that rye, peppery, uh, farmhouse uh, kind of aspect to it. So I think it is really fairly traditional in 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 the way that I like it. Uh, very thirst quenching. Well, they kicked it to the curb and then they brought it back. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so I think you know, especially with the mosaic and um, and the uh, earthiness of the uh, of the rye and all, I would say it's a it's a pineapple in the grass. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, kind of, I, don't even know. No. I don't know what that means. No, 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 no. Well, like no, you no. just picked up. I'm you with pick, you, man. I'm with you. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. It's like a piece guys. of pineapple that you just picked up out of the freshly mown yeah. grass. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I know no, what a no. pineapple flag hanging outside your house means. But. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, you know, it's very Tell inter- me later. I, you know, it's very interesting. You know, talking here about for a good time. You know, yeah, kind of the brewing scene. You know, in Louisiana, I have always felt is. Very, Swampy? Well, it's very tough, you know. Like so a gator? Abita is, you know, basically the probably one of the largest, you know, craft craft beer makers, you know, in, in the Louisiana area. And I've seen, you know, breweries kind of come and go, you know, over the last five years. And I just – I don't know if it is something about the business climate that just, you know, hasn't really caught on there. Um, so, you know – it There's NOLA, right? Yeah, NOLA's good, man. No yeah. – Oh, and Magnolia um, yeah. is another you know yeah. label down there. Well, but. beer is just surging from this from that state. As a matter of fact, surging. This one, Great like Raft, the is the first the brewery in Shreveport to uh, be established since Prohibition. Boom! Huh? Okay. Yeah. Wow. There you go. All right. So it's go. not in New Orleans. It's in Shreveport. Shreveport. Yeah. And so uh, the, you know, very healthy you know economy there in, in Shreveport. And uh, so I you know, I can see why those still have a good fighting chance uh, for sure. So, well, uh, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> and then Quicker we'll than talk that. about this beer From some Gray more. Raft, as I'm stretching out until uh, Don't we turn get it. Into Don't turn us off, guys. We'll be right back. It's not turn us off. Destination. But baby, the whole elation Riding down this lover's avenue As slow as a willow blows Or as fast as the whirlwind grows We glide beneath the stars in cobalt blue Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling, wondering if we're only passing through. Open roads and open windows, my hand is yours forever, sweet love. Our eyes ahead on these back roads with a view. Hey, welcome back to Sips, Suds, and Smokes. On today's episode, we're going, uh, it's a Suds episode, and we're, it's a bottle share event. We're going through a series of beers that each of the hosts has brought. We've gone through a couple, and we're talking about I'm a- going to serve that for show and tell, Dave. Yeah, this is definitely show and tell, Dave. That's right. <laughs> no, you have to put your pants back on. So, uh. going <laughs> to share for show and tell. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're talking about a beer from Great Raft, which is called All My Tomorrows. It's All a hoppy saison. So. Like the Frank Sinatra song. I get that right. I Reverend thought it Mark. was a, one of those soap operas. Mm. All My t- Tune In Tomorrow. Tune In Tomorrow for All My Tomorrows. All yes. My tomorrows. Reverend Mark reveals who the murderer is. I was thinking of a different story on the Great Raft, which is a hoppy saison. Is that an oxymoron unto itself? Yes, it is. Why would you add hops to a saison? Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that's what they're getting at when they say kick tradition to the curb. Is the fact that like, we're going to take this saison, which is not hoppy. Right, it's but, not. The, it's not that edgy. Guys. So, how many but people have yeah. you really seen have pulled this off well? 
Like uh, none. Two? Oh no, no. I can think of uh, Lightberry Farms. Really? Are you talking about Hoppy Saison? Hoppy Saison. Blackberry yeah. Farms. Like he he uh, he he really just nailed it. I mean, Blackberry Farms kind of made a name. That's for kind of their, what kind of their deal. Um, and it's an American thing, Mike. I mean, it's like we're we're yeah, American, sure. man. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna throw the hops in yeah. there. Well, I thought it was uh, really subtle. Uh, personally, I we're gonna take your lambic and put it. Yeah. Make it hoppy. <laughs> I, yeah. I thought it was a bit of a mess. Um, it, it, have some it's a strange style. It's a little difficult for me to get my head, you know, around this. Okay. Personally, I I thought it was a great saison that they hosed up with the hops. I I would have just enjoyed it without the hops itself. I really thought the base beer was actually quite good. Um, I think it'd be interesting to have it with and without the hops. There you go. Yeah, but I, no. I I thought it was mm-hmm. good with the hops. So I mean, I, I liked it. I thought it only has thirty five IBUs, but you've got that citrus thing going it wasn't on. Over, it wasn't over. It was mosaic, right? Yeah. It was a new world. They weren't hop, trying to so. create like a, a you know some hop bomb, you know, with a saison yeast, which right. I hate. Ninety nine IBUs saison. <laughs> yeah. Now, 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 <laughs> it'll burn your tongue. <laughs> and hoppy, I mean, you guys. I think we'll agree that the hoppy saison as a style is actually a, a nice challenge to have as a brewer because trying to balance that yeast, which usually takes a little time to really deliver, find the right hops, right to, that that are going to stay, you know, the, to keep the the hoppiness there while you're waiting for that yeast I think to deliver it is the a goods. Don Quixote swan dive in concrete, yeah, you know, nice, creative I've, moment. I've not so. been able to do it. Do like a dry hop saison, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you know, yeah. let the yeast do their thing and then then dry hop it, you know. Yeah, with certain kinds of hops that would give it more spice, but yeah, I'm I just want the bitterness to stay back. Yeah. I would just back, do, back, yeah, back, back. Well, so you know, I kudos. Would only use Mount Hood. Like I said, I you know, it's what they didn't do, which uh, they didn't add, you know, so many hops, you know, to this where it just completely overwhelmed the beer. And I think that would have been very easy to do. So if they had gone to 36 IBUs, that had yeah. been it. This is also clean. <laughs> uh, I think this is also a clean beer, right? I mean, they yeah, that, that brewery does have a nice uh, sort of lineup of Brett beers as well and uh there was no funk here yeah they kept this one kind of legit all right reverend mark i think you've restored a little of my faith in the louisiana beer scene you know with this so yeah uh, i will give kudos to that bless you my son we we can have another have a a second louisiana beer purchase that would be great (laughs) um you know I, i would I'd like to see some of the rest of the lineup from Great Raft, you know, maybe in uh, some point in That'd time That'd be cool if Great Raft sent yeah. us some beer. Yeah. It would be. It would be. Well, our um, uh, our rating here for the Great Raft, All My Tomorrow, Hoppy Saison, is going to be a such rating of four. Uh, uh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good one. Well, next up is the beer that I brought. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you're all going to hammer on. So uh, this is a beer uh, that is from Idle Time Brewing Company. Um, it is a Cherry Kolsch. It's a golden infused ale uh, is the style declaration. And, uh, you know, uh, I've you know spent a lot of time, you know, in, in the area um, and uh, – I think what's very interesting about this story is, so this is a brew pub that actually went broke. And um, so Stowe is a ski town. Um, And um, so it's very seasonal. Um, But, I mean, here's the scene that that you have going on. You have a brew pub that was, you know, uh, created back in the 80s. And um, you have a very seasonal, you know, area and uh, the neighbors that you have that are brewing in the backyard are the Alchemist and Hill Farmstead. Right. Yeah. And you've decided that you're going to to brew a beer in this town, you know, for, you know, the the seasonal folks. Um, you know, you talk about a Don Quixote moment. I mean, this is a moment where I would say there's possibly some questionable business making skills. So, Idle time indeed. Yeah. If you're sick of Hedy Topper, try this. <laughs> right, yeah. There's, you know, that line is so annoying to stand in all day long. I mean, hey. there's wind and rain out there. I mean, I just can't believe that anybody would possibly do something like that. We're idling away. Yeah. So, time. you know, a, uh, 
so a couple of business people come along and they decide uh, they owned another property, I believe, in the area called Michaels on the Hill. And they decided to invest and, and actually purchase Idle, uh, Idle Time, which is a combination. It's, again, it's a brew pub, so it's a mm. restaurant, and they actually have a brewery. Uh, I believe it's a, physically attached to it or in close proximity. They go and hire a guy that uh, decides to craft old world style. Guess what? They don't make at Hill Farmstead or IPAs. at the, at, at, uh, yeah. at the Alchemist. They don't really Oof. make, you know, uh, old world style Vienna uh, lager. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Will Gilson is the brewer um, for. I Idle thought it Time. was Gil Wilson. No, it's it's Will Gilson. So mm. Thank you. Um, I had that backwards. Uh, I, yeah, now you got me second uh, thing, you know, about the whole thing. So, you know, uh, good old Will Gill. They're just, no, it's not Will Gill. It's, it's, yes, it is Will Gill. <laughs> My God, I can't believe sort of, that happened. Sort of. So, uh, you know, this really kind of captured my attention. I, I love a really good Kolsch and, um, I'm just such a fan of cherries. Mm. Not. Mm. They're uh, the pits. Yeah. But I just, you know, I really, uh, I thought this would be a very interesting moment of looking at a beer that's being made in the shadow of such giants, you know, in the area and really seeing uh, how well. And I thought it really was hanging very tough. I thought it was a really great Kolsch. Um, hanging you know, tough. Isn't that like a... Backstreet Boys song? Or? No, it's not a participation trophy either. So, um, you know, the thing I liked was is just how subtle the whole thing was. Um, and it is. Yeah? I think it's uh, it's not subtle as a Kolsch particularly, but the cherry does. does um, I really don't know why they added that cherry, to be honest with you. Huh. Yeah, but it doesn't overpower, and that's and what doesn't. we're hoping yeah. It, yeah. it would not do. it. It's described as a very crisp, tart, bready uh, Kolsch, and it strikes me as like if I had to put all those three descriptors together, it's kind of like a thin smear of cherry puree on a toasted piece of artisan bread, huh. light artisan bread. There he is. With there honey. he is. That's yeah, why we keep. On it. That's why we keep Reverend. I Mark know, right? right? <laughs> he's he's magic. He had, your... he had me at thin smear. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I got to give you two on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, I liked this beer. I mean, uh, immediately, I, I was, did too. I, I, I I, I, to be honest, I was like, oh, why have they, why have they screwed up what might be a good Kolsch? And that wasn't necessarily the case, but, uh, but it's definitely has a lot of Kolsch character. The 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 malty breadiness is there for sure. The yeast is definitely doing its thing, and the cherry is is very a golden infused ale. It's subtle. it just feels possibly like, a golden confused ale. But it feels but like lightly, they were afraid. Infused. Yeah. yeah, it feels like they were like, okay, we're just gonna put a drop. I wonder of if cherry they blended here. some more. I wonder if the you know it was They're more. Like, oh my god! I wonder we, if it was just more cherry at first, and they were like, oh my god! Oh, you know, we dude. Gotta, we gotta so, add some more <laughs> would you say this is a good beer or this is a good brew pub beer? Uh, I think a good brew pub good, beer is a good a, beer. It is a I good. Mean, it is a good brew pub beer for sure. But I, I don't think you can distinguish the two. I mean, I, I think a a good brew pub beer is a good beer. I mean, you know, yeah, you're at the brew pub though. You've had a few, and now you're ready for the cherry Kolsch, man. Bring that thing out. But that's the same as a, yeah. a tap room, though. I mean, you like yeah. you go to whatever tap room you're like oh well i've been drinking my favorite beer for three We're rounds drinking the pale ale now yeah okay well the- i see you've got the you know you got the kumquat yeah. kumquat stout Careful. you know easy <laughs> Careful. You, know? <laughs> you know so let me try that one or the you know you didn't got we the- have an episode where i yeah, really you, made a big yes you you're, did. you're afraid of kumquats and <laughs> kudzu vine now we're yes, very yeah. aware of your yes. of your two Kum- fears kumquat. you know it's like, hey, I've had five rounds. I'm going to try the trout beer. You know, it's not like that. I mean, it, it could be that at a brew pub or it could be that at a That's what I thought he meant. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, this beer could have actually been created kind of by happenstance. The IPA was sort of that way. It sure. was, you know, it was overstuffed the cast with hops, ship it to India, and voila, you've got an IPA. Oh, are you This could have like, been, they yeah. they were brewing a Kolsch. Yeah. It was, it was winter. The brewer had a cold. 
and he just <laughs> accidentally dropped some Luden's cherry cough drops. Oh. You you just don't know. Or like, you just don't know. Or like how they oh. or like how they invented Reese's peanut butter cups, you know. Oh my god. Those two guys bumped into each other. Two guys bumped one guy had a bunch of chocolate, one guy had a bunch of peanut you butter. You got chocolate on my peanut guys, butter. Yeah, you got peanut butter on my chocolate. Yes. And then they were like, Oh my I god, love I love guys. you. And then they got married. Those two guys got married. I love those guys. And that's how they invented Reese's peanut butter wow. cups. I have just never heard a beer review devolve so so quick. Have you never listened to this show? <laughs> like, yeah. Just you know. Well, this is pretty much every episode. This right? is the Reese's peanut butter cup of the beer. Thanks. Industry. Yeah. I'm going to wrap this up uh, on the uh, Idle Time Brewing Cherry Kolsch. Our Sudge rating for this beer is going to be a three. Wait, I thought there was a story to this beer. Um, that was all the story I wanted that to talk about. That was the story. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that's all the story okay. I think The rest I of the story I thought is it was, for the I thought after it was show. No, more yeah. geographically yeah. Sort it of is, but centric I, story. You know, you There's a are, unicorn and a you know, Pinocchio. You're, you're, you're gonna, I thought we were going to get some technique there. No, no I'm not going to no. go there. No. Anyway, let's, talk about, our, man. let's no. talk about our last beer here uh, a little quick. So uh, our next beer is another beer that Dave brought from Ballast Point. This is the Homework Series Batch Number 7. It's a session saison. This is a kind of cool series because it's a homebrewer uh, that has actually uh, been moved into commercial light, right? Well, so like Ballast Point, every year they would have a contest for their employees. And so it was like a homebrew competition, kind of like a pro-am. And whoever won would get their beer uh, brewed. Uh, you know, on the uh, on the big scale, so, uh, so something happened, and then some guy won. Could have been a girl. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all they're really saying is that uh, this beer was good. Dave's crack research. And I'm on crack research. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm I'm at six. Now I'm at seven. This is number seven. The recipe for this saison. Was Do you need another from- bar? Was pulled from our extensive R and D catalog. It was brewed to be a flavorful and refreshing session beer that you can enjoy all day long. The beer pours a warm straw color with a slight haze. True. The aroma is full of spicy notes that you would expect from this saison yeast strain. Maybe light malts with touches of rye and wheat form a great backbone. To support the delicate flavor and aroma, which is enhanced with a bit of hop spiciness. Yeah, please don't use the The body finishes light and dry. Hmm. It's a super easy drinking beer, perfect for a day of home brewing, which is a hyperlink. So, homebrew (laughs) recipe created by Nate Stevens. Well, Nate Stevens. Go, Nate. Good job, buddy. (laughs) This is a four and a half percent. Beer with only 17 IBU. Way to go, Nate. You got your you name go. on the radio, buddy. That's a Saison, man. Yeah, Nate, you got your sh- name on a radio show nobody ever listens to. So <laughs> good job with that. Mom, I'm on the radio. It's 245. So this is, a, to me, like a pretty straightforward Saison. Um, very light on the spectrum of flavor. So I think it is pretty crushable, and you could probably have quite a few. I'll uh, now defer to Mr. Saison, not Saison Man, but Mr. Saison, <laughs> uh, Dave Caperton. Is that me? I'm Mr. Yeah, S- you are Mr. Saison. Mr. Saison here. Well, um, yeah, man. Break it down I for agree. Us. I really like this beer. I think um, he. It's very clear, though. I, 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 it, it is indeed. It's it's more clear than any of my Saisons, that's for sure. Um I don't think there's a whole whole lot of weed in here. I don't think maybe, but uh, I could be wrong. Yeah. And the the hops taste kind of noble to me. I tried to find no uh, bile. I think there is a link here for the recipe though. So I'm, nice. I should have I should have gone. Rev Mark, what do you think? I agree with Dave. I mean, I don't really detect a lot of weed in here any either, uh, but it does have a little bit of uh, perfume to it. Yeah, yeah. That uh, like Chanel floral. Yeah, it's floral. Um, yeah, so an I, I, I think it's, or something like that. Yeah, this is one beer, unlike another that we just reviewed, uh, that they're not trying to kick tradition to the curb, right? And uh, and and saisons traditionally are sort of a session beer. They're, there you go. They're, they're low ABV. 
You know, uh, I I thought this was very crisp. Um, you know, I I don't know for some reason I just thought it was a little too sweet. You know, for saison. I don't know, it had a yeah. bit of a kind of a cola quality. It may have a little corn. Yeah, there may be a little corn. Yeah, they're corny. Well, our uh, suds rating uh, here for the Ballast Point Homework Series. What we give it was a three. Is going to be a three. I, the more I drink it, the more I like it, though. Okay. Yeah, well, then next time on the next episode, it'll be a four. Yeah, so, yeah. I just think yeah. my Mbev bias was just over operative this time. That's right. Yeah. His corn radar went off. Whoever. Yeah. yeah. That's well, a, that's uh, a thing. thank you all for joining us for this episode. We hope you enjoyed this episode and catch all of our other episodes online as well that are available on lots of media outlets SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, YouTube, iHeart, Google Play, PRX, and Spreaker is our native media host. iTunes and Google Play are and our own Android app are the easiest ways to enjoy this show on your phone. Just search for Sip, Suds, and Smokes on iTunes or in the Google Play Store. You can also just yak into your phone and say, play Sip, Suds, and Smokes. Don't yak on your phone. Don't yak on your phone. We love your feedback, and you can reach us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter and Instagram every day at Sip, Sud, Smoke, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of fake news. Please take the time to rate this episode five and only five stars if you're listening online. Hey, I want to thank all of our co-hosts for being here. Good old boy, Dave. And that's the way it is. <laughs> Good old boy, Caperton. Thanks, guys. It's been fun. And Reverend Mark. Lovely to be here again. I like how Caperton's always optimistic. You know, he's like, I'm almost always happy to come back here again. I love just, you know, the cadence of it all. Well, I keep waiting for you guys to say, we don't need that It's good old boy Mike asking you, come back, join us once again, and keep on sipping. This has been a one tan hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.